Joe Goldberg is a particularly interesting character on TV. There's no others that are like him that are out there. Within the show You, we've watched this man who originally started out back in season one as what you could call an ordinary guy in the early episodes now turn into a serial killer, kidnapper, framer, and he doesn't bat an eyelid when it comes to doing so. With the most recent season of the show allowing us to see Joe in his worst mental state that he'd ever been in, I thought I'd take a deeper look into Joe's mind, look at his past, and try to work out why he's ended up the way that he has. So let's get into this. Let's analyze Joe Goldberg's broken mind in You Season 4 Part 2. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. All of Joe's mental trauma and physical trauma is the subject of what occurred way back when he was a young boy. He came from a home where his mother and father weren't on the best of terms. His father was abusive towards his mother and himself, and his mother would often cheat on his father with multiple different people. When Joe was a young boy, we saw that one evening he protected his mother from being attacked by his father, and he ultimately ended up killing him. His mother took the blame for the killing, which meant that Joe ended up being taken away and adopted by an individual who was called Ivan Mooney. This was where the abuse for Joe continued and the warping of who he is in the present day started happening. Ivan would often beat Joe and also lock him in a cage in order to mentally drain him and make him give in to the beliefs that he wanted him to have. Mooney saw the demons that were inside of Joe from a young age, the demons that Mooney himself said that he had. So of course, being in that environment and coming from a difficult place was always going to mold his mind to be the way that it was later on down the line. The cage that Joe uses in the present day on his victims is something that is molded off of the original one that he used to be kept in by Ivan Mooney, showing that it had a profound impact on him when he was younger. Ivan would tell Joe that he was doing it out of love, and I think that is a key thing to understand here. Joe believed that he was being punished and put in this cage out of love, something that he took with him and always did moving forward when it came to some of the people that he loved most, Beck and even Marion. When there was a chance that they were going to leave him and cause that part of his life to be absent, he would put them in there so that he could be with them and ultimately try to get them to change their mind. But due to them not doing so, he would end up killing them, something that he was familiar with from a young age. However, it did differ slightly with Marion. Joe has an obsession with every single woman that shows him the slightest bit of attention and interest. He gets infatuated with them, to the point where he'll kill for them whilst also justifying it as a way to kill for himself. Which ties back into what was said earlier. He kills the people that get in the way of ruining his chance of happiness and the love that's present. There was a scene in season 1 of the show where Joe was meeting with Dr. Nikki, and the perfect description of Joe was described and it ran true and became apparent in Season 4 Part 2 of the show. Dr. Nikki said, Some people have a hard time letting love in. Some people are built to love, and some people are searching. Searching for someone who can love them the way that they deserve, and that's you. Ever since Joe was a young boy, he's been looking for somebody to love him the way that he feels he deserves to be loved. Something that he never found. His mother didn't, his father didn't, Ivan Mooney didn't. Beck didn't, Candace didn't, Marion didn't, even Love didn't. She was a mirror of Joe at that present time. However, we saw that in the season 4 part 2 finale, Kate was in fact that person who could give Joe the version of love that he needed. Kate was prepared to love Joe no matter what his past was, putting all of those terrible things aside because she loved Joe for the person that she came to know. And this was because she also had a dark past as well and knew that it was difficult to find inner peace. With them both saying that they wanted to keep each other good and with Joe saying that was all that he ever longed to hear, it seems as though the void and actions that he carries out because the feeling of abandonment and being unloved from when he was younger has now been filled. But the love, burning possession and stalker emitting side isn't the only side of Joe's mind that is present. It would have been prior to this season, but with his mental state taking a deteriorating turn, there was the erotomania that was present within it, something that we hadn't seen before. Erotomania is a disorder when an individual believes that another person is directly speaking with them, and then they start to have delusions about being with them. This is something that we saw with Joe in the form of Rhys Montrose. He'd never met him before, but he believed that he was always with him and was a tangible human being that was present in the room. This was due to the book that Reese had written and that Joe had read, which was called A Good Man in a Cruel World, something that Joe believed that he was. 
Joan had this connection with Reese and believed that he was real due to the erotomania, and this happened because he saw stark similarities in the words that were written within his memoir about a troubled childhood and feeling out of place in the world that he was now in, something which Joe had first-hand experience with. Erotomania can be triggered due to stress and even more so when it comes to losing a loved person. When we think about what happened with Joe prior to these delusions, he killed his wife Love, made out that he was dead, gave up the one thing in his life that he did love, which was his son Henry, followed Marion around the world because he believed that she would love him, but in actual fact she didn't, and now he was living the life as somebody called Jonathan Moore. Stress was definitely present, and the loss of somebody that he loved was also present too. In a world where Joe found himself all alone and with nothing to keep him happy, he found the memoir, hence where his erotomaniac delusional state became present and took over his mind. With the obsession, murder, stalking, delusions, and many other negative traits of Joe Goldberg's mind, there is one part that is present within it that does show a sense of good within the character, and that is care. But care through empathetic reasons. These emotions and actions are never carried out towards a love interest. They're always present when it comes to somebody who's younger and going through a troubled time. We saw this with Paco and we saw it with Ellie. Joe looked out for Paco and his mother for the entirety of the first season. He did this because he empathized with Paco and he saw himself in the young boy that was standing in front of him. A boy that had an abusive man in his life who was hurting his mother, himself, and causing his family pain. A feeling that Joe knew all too well. And with Ellie, it was something slightly different. Ellie was all alone following the actions of what Love carried out due to her killing her sister. So there was a sense of responsibility that was there on Joe's shoulders. Knowing how alone she was going to be, how vulnerable she would be, and how she was somebody who didn't deserve the trauma that she had presented in her life. Hence why he was prepared to send her money to keep her okay. At his core, Joe is a psychopath. All of his actions lean towards it. The stalking, the murdering, the obsessing, the possessing, the souvenirs that he acquires, the multiple personalities he adopts, the speed in which he can do it, the hallucinations, and the lack of remorse when doing so. But we knew that. However, right down at the center of it, it's why he's like that, and it's all down to love. He's never experienced the love he felt he deserved, and the only way he knew how to be loved was by being mentally and physically harmed. Joe is a broken person who needs serious help, and I don't think he's ever going to get it. I imagine his demise will be on the horizon in the not-so-distant future due to him never being able to change. But for now, it seems to be a character we love to hate, or we hate to love. So... There you have it, Joe Goldberg's Broken Mind Analyzed. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What do you think of Joe Goldberg? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.